oh my gosh, my ADD is so bad. I keep forgetting what I'm saying in the middle of a sentence. I'm sorry. Um, that's something else I have to struggle with. I'll get like 8 million ideas and I'll sit down to do art and I want to do all of them and I can't like pick one. And so I just don't do anything and I play Sudoku all night. Anyway. Hey friends, um, Journal Girl here and I was going to film a completely different video, but there's something wrong with my DSLR camera battery, uh, probably because it hasn't been charged in about a year or two and I'm learning if you don't charge things, it usually kills them. So today I actually wanted to talk to you about tips to do art and be creative as a spoonie. So um, anyone who has any kind of chronic illness, um, mental or physical, is a spoonie. Um, the spoon theory was created to um, help explain energy conservation and also as a way to explain to friends and family how we run out of energy. So I also include mental disabilities in the rubric of a spoonie because I have several friends with them and they go through the same things as someone with a physical illness, with chronic pain. There are times when depression can get really bad and you're tired and you're not doing anything. You can have anxiety that keeps you from doing anything as well. Um, you just don't have the mental energy. Here are some tips I have for you if you are a spoonie and you want to make some art. Number one, remember to pace yourself. This means the minute you start to feel pain, the minute you start to feel the fatigue, mental or physical, take a break. Walk away from the project, get up, maybe do a little dance party in the middle of your space, lie down. Um, one of the best pieces of advice I have gotten um, is from um, Dr. Sarah Myhill's book on um, chronic fatigue syndrome. The, that advice was, to lie down somewhere dark without any music on or anything like that and rest for 15 minutes. You fall asleep, you don't fall asleep. I find it's really great to replenish me and I can think about what I'm working on. I can daydream about TV shows I like. I can think about what I have to do tomorrow or later and, and then I can get back to my project. That brings me to number two. See if you can start using supplies that allow you to walk away. When I started using oils um, to play with, and I, no, I do not do oils, I just liked playing with them. I did them all al fresco or whatever, where it was all at once um, because I'm impatient. But the thing I liked about it is I was coming from the world of acrylics. And with acrylics, you can't walk away. The acrylics are going to dry. You're not gonna be able to blend on your page. You're gonna have to do a new, another layer. So you kind of have to finish. So. Sometimes I would push myself to finish what I was working on. So what you wanna do is try working with supplies that require that don't require you to have to use up that supply or it's gonna dry out or you're not gonna be able to blend it when you're having lower energy days. So watercolor crayons and um, markers and colored pencils. I'm gonna do a whole video about my top 10 art supplies for spoonies, which is what I was gonna film, but I need my regular camera for it. Um, this way, you can take care of yourself. You can get up, you can walk away from the project, take care of yourself, rest, and come back to it an hour later, three days later, whatever, and still be able to continue on with your page or your spread or whatever you're making, okay? Number three, don't let, how do I put this? Okay, I'll put it this way. My hands shake a lot and I have arthritis in my hands and I have damage in my neck from a car accident that affects the nerves in my right arm. And so I used to get really frustrated and upset when I would work on art and the lines would be totally shaky and I couldn't do a straight line and I would get so frustrated. I would just really be like, why can't my hands be steady? Why can't this and that? But then what I realized was that that makes it my art. That having a chronic illness and being a spoonie is a huge part of my identity because it has to be. Being sick is a full-time job. I speak to or have an appointment with a member of my healthcare team at least once a week. I have my migraine doctors 
phone number and I can text her when I'm having issues. So it is a full-time job and that means that it's part of who I am and it makes me passionate about working with other people with any kind of disabilities. It makes me empathetic to everybody's situations and I love that that has fostered that in me. So when I create art and my lines are really not straight, that's me. That's me and my physical body in this world on the page. And um, I remember when I started posting the girls that I draw with ink, like the ones behind me, you can't see them there, but you can see them in the mirror, um, how they really like the thick lines. And the reason I do the thick lines is because they're very, very forgiving. I can go over them again when my hand is steadier, and I usually have to, because if you watercolor them over the, um, the ink, it gets, you know, it's not as clear and dark and black, I guess. So I have to go over it anyways. And if you make a mistake there, you just go a little bit bolder with that line and you are set to go. So whatever it is that you live with, let it be in your art and don't let it be a source of frustration when you're trying to create. Because I want to see art that reflects the artist, that reflects their life and where they are in life and who they are and how they function in this life. And Oh my gosh, my ADD is so bad. I keep forgetting what I'm saying in the middle of a sentence. I'm sorry. Um, that's something else I have to struggle with. I'll get like 8 million ideas and I'll sit down to do art and I want to do all of them and I can't like pick one. And so I just don't do anything and I play Sudoku all night. Anyway, um, but let your art reflect who you are, your struggles, and just let it be. And, and it's just when I finally let it go and said, my art's gonna have shakiness, my art's not gonna have any like oils or acrylics because I just don't have the energy to pull those out. I don't wanna have to, you know, push myself to finish something because my paint's gonna dry out. So let yourself be reflected in your art and own it and let it be powerful and let it be a strength. Let that vulnerability show. It's really, really hard to do. I know I'm still on that journey, but Every day that I do art, I feel like I've accomplished something. I don't have a studio. This is my bedroom. I have a hospital table of art supplies. That's what I use. That's, I sit on my bed, I sit in my recliner, I lay in my bed, that's what I use. So that would be my fifth tip for Spoonies. Create where you are comfortable. Lay on the couch, lay in your bed, sit in the recliner. If sitting on the floor is comfortable to you, do that. Don't let yourself be fooled into thinking that you have to have this beautiful studio and this chair and this desk and this organization system in order to do art. Do it where you're comfortable because if you're comfortable when you're creating, you're going to create for longer. You're not going to hurt as fast. And if, if you are someone who is a mental illness spoonie, um, add to that like um, a diffuser with lavender or a candle. My, my lavender candle is burning right now. Soothing music um, in a place where you feel safe so that you can express yourself without that depression, anxiety, or whatever else you're dealing with clouding up your head. I've been an advocate for working on art in your couch. I started the couch box years and years ago. It's always constantly evolving as I learn about new materials and I play with new uh, products. Like I said, that will be my next video, but I just wanted to get some tips out to you guys for my Spoonie friends who want to do art, who want to create, and there might be these mental roadblocks because of how we're not part of like the physiotypicals, the neurotypicals that this world has been created for, or that this world has been yeah created by, I should say. Um, so we see studios, we see all these supplies everywhere. We see people working with amazing stuff in, ac in acrylics and stuff, but they dry so fast. And I don't want you guys to push yourself and then not make art because you feel like these are the conditions that you have to make it in. And if you don't feel good that day and you can't sit at that table or you can't sit in that studio, well, you just can't make art. And that is absolutely not true. And I know there are several artists that I follow on Instagram who are friends of mine, who I have seen making art in bed, who has been making art on the couch. And that is where I'm happiest. I'm happiest in front of watching Netflix or listening to music, mostly watching Netflix, laying in bed, sitting in my recliner, doodling, drawing, playing with art supplies that I can play with in that situation that doesn't require a cup of water, that doesn't require 
a big palette or a big desk, just simple supplies. You would be amazed what you could create with just colored pencils or watercolor crayons or just a pen, or just a black pen or um, a brush pen of some kind or markers. You can create amazing pages. They don't have to be these complicated, layered, collaged, acrylic, beautiful spreads. They can be a poem about what you're going through right now that you maybe you highlight certain portions of it and it looks colorful and bright and it's who you are. Maybe it's a doodle of a flower. I love doodling these flowers that are behind me. Maybe you just do a couple of those in your journal and you color them and it's meditative for you. That is a journal page. Anytime you express yourself, anytime you feel the need to get something out, that is a journal page. It can be very simple. It doesn't need a lot. I did a blog post about this. Um, a few months ago about how I did a whole journal page with a ballpoint pen. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Um, from now on I'm going to be doing um, videos that are geared towards other Spoonie artists because that's who I am and that's what I can speak to with any kind of authority or expertise. And I've lived as a Spoonie for 24, 20, 22 years now. So I know a lot about it but I'm still on my path. Got three new diagnoses last summer so um, I just hope that you can take something away from this that will help you make more art. That is my goal. That's what I'll be trying to do um, on a weekly basis here from now on. Anyway, don't forget to leave a comment if you have any questions. The blog post will have the five tips written out for you in case you um, forget or you're hard of hearing. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the energy to write the subtitle, so um, I will put it so they can be auto-generated. That's how I watch everything myself. I love you all. I'm here for you all. If you want to get a hold of me, I would say Instagram is probably the best way to send me a message. Um, I will totally reply. I can't guarantee it will be within 24 hours, um, but I will always reply. I was always read. I was always reply. Um, anyway, thank you so much. And um, yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.